Welcome back. In this video, we are going to introduce some more definitions um, that will help you uh, with your reasons and proof. You'll use these as reasons and proof. Um, and you also use them in, in some other types of problems and will work to help improve our logic. Uh, we're going to define midpoint. We are going to define bisector and we are going to define trisector. Keep in mind, since these are definitions, that these will be reversible. So we will be able to um, change the if and then the then and it'll still make sense. Now, you can't just reverse them. It means the same thing. Order is still going to be important, but they are going to be reversible. Keep in mind also that midpoints are only for segments. Okay, we, we don't take the midpoint of an angle. Whereas bisectors and trisectors, they can be for segments and angles. We can bisect an angle and get two congruent angles. We can trisect an angle. Keep in mind, though, that if we're bisecting an angle, the conclusion here is going to be congruent angles. We'll talk about that in a minute. Same with trisector. So let's move into our definition. A midpoint. A midpoint is the point that splits a segment into two congruent segments. Okay. And we've already seen this in some of our classwork. Okay. Um, if I have a segment uh, AB, okay, and I have a point X, and if AX is congruent to XB, then we know X is a midpoint. So the reasons in proof, if a point divides a segment into two congruent segments, then it's a midpoint. So in this case, we might be given we have to be given two congruent segments. So looking above, we'd have to be given that AX is congruent to XB. And then our conclusion here would be that X is a midpoint. Okay, so that's going to work for this first definition. If a point divides a segment into two congruent segments, so we must already have two congruent segments, and the then part is what we're trying to prove, then it's a midpoint. Here the, here's the converse. If a point is a midpoint, then it divides a segment into two congruent segments. So in this case, we must be given that something is a midpoint. And then we're conclusion, if something is a midpoint, we can conclude then it divides something into two congruent segments. So in this case, we must be given, first of all, that X is a midpoint. Okay, And the result of that, if X is a midpoint, then what do we know? We can prove or conclude then that AX is congruent to BX. Okay? That would be our conclusion. So the if part is always something we've already established. And the then part is what we're trying to prove or establish in that particular statement. And this will make more sense as we continue with the proof process. Um, but order does matter. Okay, So here the prove or the conclude would be AX is congruent to XB. Okay, So order matters. Some more frequently used definitions, bisector. A point or a segment or array or a line, any one of these things that divides a segment or an angle into two congruent angles. That's what a bisector is. Or I guess it would be we could divide something into two congruent segments as well. It could be a bisector. Okay? So if a ray bisects an angle, then it forms two congruent angles. And we're going to use bisectors mostly with angles. So in this case, we must be given something as a bisector. So let's say we have angle uh, A, B, C. And let's say we're given that um, 
bx, ray bx, bisects angle abc. Okay, so bx is imposing itself, this ray is imposing itself onto this angle, big angle ABC, in some unique special way. It's bisecting it. So our conclusion here, then, BX is going to form two congruent angles because that's what a bisector does. So we would say, I'm going to save myself a little time here. I'm just going to number those angles. And I'm going to say that that must be angle one, must be congruent to angle two. And here again is the converse. So for every definition, we actually pick up two reasons in proof. If a ray divides an angle into two congruent angles, then it's a bisector. So this might be the same thing, except we might be given that angle one is congruent to angle two. So I might give you a diagram that looks like this. Okay, angle one and two, and they have the same tick marks. So use the same labels, A, B, C, X. Okay, we're given angle one's congruent to angle two. Well, what do we know? What can we um, establish here? Well, we can establish that BX, ray BX, bisects angle ABC. Okay, so there is bisector. Trisector, well, tri means three, so apparently a trisector creates three congruent segments or three congruent angles. But trisectors, you're probably going to need two things, generally going to need two things. So two points, lines, segments, or rays that divide a segment or an angle into three congruent segments or angles. Now keep in mind, if we're going to trisect segments, the only thing we can get out is three congruent segments. If we're going to trisect angles, then the only thing we can get out is congruent angles. Okay? We can't trisect a segment and get congruent angles. That's not going to happen. So keep that in mind. Pay attention to your vocabulary. So a reason we'd see in proof, if two rays divide an angle into three congruent angles, then it is a trisector. So in this case, we've got an angle. We must have two rays extending out. So now we have one, two, and three. If all three of these angles are congruent, we need a lot of labels here. Our big angle is ABC and DE. So if two rays divide an angle into three congruent angles, so I've taken this big angle, ABC, and I've divided it into the three congruent angles, well, what do I know about BD and BE? They're trisectors. And this could be the other way around. Here, we could be given that B, ray BD and ray BE trisect angle A, B, C, oops, A, B, C. So we're given that these are trisectors. Well, what can we conclude? Well, we can conclude then that these three angles are congruent. That angle one is congruent to angle two is congruent to angle three. And the reason is if two rays trisect an angle, that's what we have going on. They're imposing themselves in a special way as trisectors. The result is we get three congruent angles. Again, order matters. And I think on the next screen here, we're going to have uh, an example of how we would write this with segments. So let's take a couple more. Sure. If two points trisect the segment, then it divides the segment into three congruent segments. So we might have a segment, A, B, C, D, okay? And we would be given B and C trisect segment 
AD. That's what we're given. I have two points that trisect a segment. Okay? B and C trisect us. Well, what do we know? What can we prove here? Well, what does a trisector do? Divide something into three equal things. So then we can conclude that so our conclusion here is that segment AB is congruent to segment BC is congruent to segment CD. So we know now, and we mark our diagram accordingly, now we know that AB is congruent to BC is congruent to CD. And this would be our reason. That's what we would write in the reason column. And the converse, of course, of that is true. If the segment is divided into three congruent segments, then it is trisected. But of course, as we know, our given then must be that AB is congruent to BC is congruent to CD. That's what we must have been given. We must have been given three congruent segments. So our conclusion, what we're looking for, is a trisector. So B and C trisect. So that would be the reason used in proof for this final step. I encourage you to take a look through the sample problems in your textbook. Look at the sample proofs. There's going to be even more reasons in there, more versions of the same thing here, um, where we might be bisecting uh, segments um, to certainly bisecting angles. Uh, but this will really get you off to a good start uh, for the proofs in section 1.5. And we can work on this when I see you in class.